Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. I am so happy to come to you today in Israel from a very new location that we have never taped in before on the Manifest telecast. We've been on television now for almost 11 years, and this is the first time that we've ever come to tell Dan to show you one of the oldest gates in the entire world. Directly behind me is a gate that dates back to the Canaanite time in the 20th century BC. This particular gate that you see, which is being protected by a covering, is a gate that existed all the way back in the time of Abraham. Now the significance of me being here in a place which is called Tel Dan, or an area where uh, ancient cities used to exist, has to do with um, the mystery of the tribe of Dan. In the next few moments, I'm going to be going into the scripture and I'm going to be sharing with you a teaching concerning this question, does the Antichrist come out of the tribe of Dan? There are many teachers of prophecy that go back as far as several hundred years and even some of the early fathers that believed that the future man of sin called the Antichrist, the last world dictator that would rule for a period of about seven years, bringing a terrible time on the earth, would actually come from the region of the tribe of Dan. What we're going to do today is explore that question because it's a very significant question for you and I. Let's go into the Word of God first of all and show you the scriptures where some scholars have believed that the tribe of Dan uh, is alluded to and why they believe the Antichrist does come out of the tribe of Dan. Once again, I'm in Israel, in the upper part of Israel, in what's called the Jordan Valley at Tel Dan, where the oldest gate, one of the oldest gates in the world, 4,000 years old, directly behind me, is located. Now, in the book of Genesis chapter 49, Jacob is dying. Jacob, of course, as you know, is the father of the tribes of Israel. You had Judah and Zebulon, and you had Benjamin, and you had Dan and Nephtali and Simeon and Levi, and you had 12 sons of Jacob. As he's dying, he wants to put a special blessing upon each of his sons, and he has something to say about Dan. Here's what he says. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel, because the word Dan means that, means to, means to judge. Dan shall be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path, that biteth the horse's heels, so that his rider shall fall backwards. Based on an interpretation of verse 17, here is how some of the early fathers interpreted the tribe of Dan. First of all, they said he shall be a serpent by the way. And we know that in the book of Revelation, the serpent is identified as Satan. And that has always been an emblem of Satan all the way back in the time of the Garden of Eden, where the enemy, the adversary, used a serpent to test Eve at the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Then it says that Dan will also be an adder in the path. Now, an adder is a very poisonous serpent. These adders do exist in the Holy Land, and they're so dangerous that if they bite you with full venom, they will kill you. So again, an adder, if you go to Psalms 91, is an, uh, a word which can be used as a symbol for Satan as well. Then it says this, he will be an adder in the path that biteth the horse's heels so that the rider shall fall backwards. Now, the, the fact that it mentions horses here has caused some of the early fathers to believe that it was a cryptic allusion to what John would later write about in the book of Revelation concerning the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Now, in the book of Revelation chapter 6, when the Lamb begins to break those seals on the seven-sealed scroll, the very first scroll that he breaks, or the seal that he breaks, is the seal in which a white horse comes forth, and there's a rider on that horse carrying a bow. It's always been pointed out that some assume that there were arrows, but there are no arrows in the bow, because a bow with arrows, would assume, would, you would assume it would symbolize war. But this rider is coming in a false peace. This is how many scholars for hundreds of years have interpreted the horse of Revelation. Therefore, they use the passage in Genesis chapter 49, 16 through 17, to say it is an early indication of how the Antichrist would come from the tribe of Dan, although the word Antichrist is a New Testament Greek word, Antichristos, 
uh, and it was not used anywhere in the Hebrew Old Testament, they identify or they suggest that that's what it means here, that it's an allusion to the Antichrist coming from the tribe of Dan. Now, the second passage that we want to deal with for just a moment where some scholars say that the Antichrist comes from the tribe of Dan is in the book of Deuteronomy 33. Now, remember, Jacob is blessing his sons near the time of their death in the passage I just read. However, in Deuteronomy chapter 33, what we discover is Moses, the great prophet, has led the children of Israel to the edge of the promised land, and he's going to die. He's not going to be permitted to go in. And as a result of this, God allows him to bring a blessing to the tribes of Israel. In this blessing, which is found in Deuteronomy chapter 33, we discover that Moses begins to speak, and here's what he says about the tribe of Dan. He says, and of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's whelp, and he shall leap from Bashan. Now, let me explain to you something about the area of Bashan. The area of Bashan is also identified in the Bible as what is called the Golan Heights. The Golan Heights is in the northern part of Israel, but specifically toward the Syrian edge, uh, moving up toward the northern border of Lebanon as well. Now, we're in the Jordan Valley area where this ancient 4,000-year-old gate behind me is situated in the area called Tel Dan. And, of course, the Jordan River, Jordan River, flows from Mount Hermon through this area and empties into the northern part of the Sea of Galilee. But let's go back to the study right here because I want to show you this. Dan is a lion's whelp and shall leap from Bashan. Now, there was a little contradiction that I, that I, I, I didn't see this contradiction. It's not really a contradiction, but if you look at it, it, it appears to be that you find old Bible maps that identify the tribe of Dan, and when they identify the tribe of Dan, they identify it as coming from the edge of what is today the modern city of Tel Aviv, going all the way down toward the area of the Gaza Strip. And I have some old Bible Bibles in which that identifies the tribe of Dan. Then there were other Bibles in my possession that when it identifies the tribe of Dan, it shows Dan as being in this particular part of the country or in the northern part of Israel. And so I was asking my dear friend Gideon Shore about that, and it appears that in the early part of Israel's possessing the promised land, that Dan actually originally took that territory, which would be Tel Aviv, toward God. But later, according to the prophecy given by Moses, they would leap from this area, which is the area of Bashan or the Golan Heights. So Dan eventually moved north of Israel. Now, what is interesting about that is Dan is one of the tribes. This is so sad to say, but Dan was one of the first tribes where idolatry came into the nation of Israel. You know, the kings, uh, back in the time of the book of Judges, uh, even, even in, jo well, actually in the book of Joshua, they began to take the promised land. But then we come into the book of Judges, and we read where in the time of the Judges, every man did that which was right in his own sight. And so what happens is you have people that are just doing, kind of doing their own thing, and you know it's like sheep without a shepherd. If you leave sheep without a shepherd, and it, it, there's going to be all sorts of difficulties, all kinds of confusion, all kinds of problems. So Dan set up a false idol, and they were one of the first tribes under the direction of other people influencing them that caused Israel to sin through idolatry. Now, we're going to go ahead of time in, from the book of Genesis and the book of Deuteronomy to the main passage that contemporary scholars say that proves that Dan, the Antichrist of the future, we're talking about the biblical Antichrist with his ten kings, will rule from the tribe of Dan or arise from the tribe of Dan. That passage happens to be in the book of Revelation where it talks about 144,000 Jews being sealed with the seal of God. When you read the entire listing, there are 12,000 from each of the tribes. Oddly enough, one tribe is missing from that tribal list, none other than the tribe of Dan. Now, it was pointed out that for many years that Dan was missing from the list in the book of Revelation. And so let's put the three scriptures together to see why some scholars, some early fathers, believe the Antichrist would come in Israel, arise from Israel out of the tribe of Dan. 
Number one is the prophecy given to, Je to uh, the old man Jacob as he's dying that talked about Dan biting the horse's heels. Number two is the prophecy given by Moses in the book of Deuteronomy that we just read that talks about Dan would leap from Bashan and would come like a lion. The third is the book of Revelation, which was written by the Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos. We call it the Apocalypse, which says that, it, that which the list indicates of the hundred and